VPFI! Here we are back again to work on the translations of these words. Mm. We can work both on translations and definitions, all right? Okay. So, um, I believe that we are going to put the translations in the ones that you don't know in Portuguese. Okay. And then we can we can uh, define, we can like use definitions for the ones they are easier to understand. All right. So, what's your definition to the verb to promise? Prometer. Oh, it's easy, yeah? It's easy. Um, okay. Yeah, this one, it's pretty much basic. And the to apologize. <clears throat> I would say pedir desculpa, mas I don't... Is that right? It's totally... Is that the only to... translation? Wow, I, I don't think we have a very specific one-word verb to describe, to, to meet apologize, but pedir desculpa is perfect. Perfect. Okay. So, why don't you apologize to him? Like, the, the right preposition after apologize is to... Yes. Apologize to him, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah I, I can't say, for example, apologize with him, for no, him, yeah? always to. All right, all right. And to forgive. Um, hmm. Perdoar. Oh, yeah. If somebody apologizes to you, you need to forgive them. Or not. <laughs> It's up to you, yeah? It's up to you. Yeah, for sure. Let's gonna go down to the vocabulary. I think this student has no questions about the verb, so we are gonna go down, okay? Okay. What's a leader? Leader. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, even in, in Portuguese, the, the pronunciation of these words, they are uh, written differently. But the pronunciation, leader in Portuguese, leader in English. Leader. And what's fair? Justo. Justo. Pretty good. You know that in Portuguese, this word has multiple meanings, yeah? You can say like, oh, uh, these pants, they ah, are so right. tight, tight, you right. know? Yeah. In Portuguese, we do have this trouble, but in English, I guess, justo comes from justice. I think so. Yeah? Sure. I, I believe it does. At, at least in Portuguese, justiça. Justiça. You know? And what is unfair? Injusto. Injusto. Easy peasy. How about apology? I don't know. You don't. No. You know the verb, but think about the verb apologize. Uh, pedir desculpa. So, apology is the noun. Desculpar. Um pedido de desculpa. Pedido de desculpa. Uh -huh. okay. Like, oh, um... Uh, this is my apology for them. Like Nirvana songs, our apologies. Todos os pedidos de desculpa. Um, you know? Yeah. It's just like that. It's a good one. And evidence. Mm. Oh, I know this. It sounds like in Portuguese too. Evidência? Evidência. Do you know Chitãozinho e Chororó? No, it's I? a uh, no. You shouldn't. You totally <laughs> shouldn't. It's they are sixty-year-old guys, and uh, they are a country couple, one of the oldest from our country here in Brazil, and they have a very famous song called "Evidências," hmm. and it's uh, like a uh, an anthem from the cowboys and cowgirls. It's you about know? crime, though, or no? No, it's not. It's like the evidence is that I love you so much. You know, okay. I'm keep giving you the evidence is that I love you so much. You know. I see. Yeah. How about posture? It's my pronunciation, right? Posture? Posture. Okay. Postura. Postura. It's what we my have. My posture is terrible. Oh, so is mine. You know? Something that I need to watch. But I, whenever I try to think about posture, I'm like this already, you know? Mm. Yeah, so bad. And the signal. Signal? Yeah. It can be like from TV can be a hand signal too, like a gesture. Mm. It can okay. be worked like, like that, yeah? And there, there's a thing, is there a possibility of pronouncing this as signal? No. No? No, it, you would think so because without the AL at the end, it's sign. Okay. Like the G is silent. And then sign. Okay, so words. signal. 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 Okay, <clears throat> all right, thank you. And what is a fad? No idea. No idea? Mm -mm. But do you know how to explain this in English or not even in English? Oh, in English I yeah. know. It's like um, something that's popular at the time. Okay, okay. In Portuguese we call that like 
Modinha. 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 Ah, he's doing this because everybody else is doing. Yeah. Like, uh, it's just a fad. It's just a fad. You, you know Neymar, right? Yeah. Remember the first time he came up with a crazy hairstyle mm -hmm. and then everybody started doing the same haircut? Yep. Everybody said, okay, it's just a... Uh, ativamos os sons. Okay, thank you. So, <laughs> yeah, everybody started uh, wearing crazy hairstyles because it was the fad of the moment. I see. You see? So, fad is... The perfect translation for that is modinha. Okay. Okay? And what is trend? This is kind of the same thing, right? Yeah, but I believe the trend, I don't know, in my point of view, it's more connected with technology. Because fad can be about anything. And the trend, whenever I hear or I see the word trend in the news, for example, they bring it connected to technology. Like something is trending. Exactly. Like the trending topics from Twitter, for mm -hmm. example, you know? I think a trend oh. <clears throat> is more like continuous, you know, like it's the evolution of something. I see. Right? I see. It it makes sense to me, especially by the translation. In Portuguese we have trend as tendência. Tendência. Yes. Mm -hmm. You see? So you can write down there tendência. Okay? But it's the same thing as tendency in I, English. I think it is. Because the tendency it's like something that it's supposed to happen. It's something that normally happens. Normally like, happens. Oh, I have the tendency to drink coffee in the morning. Yeah, I wouldn't see them as synonyms, but the maybe it's synonyms from fad. It, or maybe imagine fad as a simple vocab and trend as a more, I don't know. Incorporated. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I feel like that. But just creating rules in my mind, you know, <laughs> just like that. And what is something fashionable or some someone fashionable? Someone fashionable mm -hmm. is somebody who follows current fat or actually someone who sets current trends for mm -hmm. fashion. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And Portuguese we have a pretty interesting name for that. A person who is fashionable, she he or she is estiloso, estiloso, estiloso. you know? Like they wear themselves in a fashionable way. Like fashionista. Yeah, like that, like that, just like that, you know? And what is the makeup? Maquiagem. Oh, this one is very easy. And there is a makeup here in Brazil, very famous. The name of it, the brand is Makeup. They have makeup from makeup. Makeup from makeup. You see? And the, what is crazy? Doido. Yeah, doido. Do you know other, other words in Portuguese, like synonyms for this word? Louco. Louco. There's another one that starts with the letter M. Maluco. Oh, you were good, <laughs> right? Uh, my gosh, you see? You Maybe see? I've just been called crazy a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you are going to incorporate this to your vocab, right? Good. Yeah. I like it. And what is tiny? Pequeno. Yeah, but... E exactly what I was going to say. Like, pequenino, pequenininho, you know? It's like, uh, I don't know, a cute way to call somebody, somebody know something that happens that it's small. For mm -hmm. example, we have small problems and we have tiny problems. They are smaller than the small. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Like uh, the, uh, you guys, you don't have, I don't think you do in English, have words to describe diminutivo and aumentativo in the English language. No, you have big and small. like super or... Really? Uh-huh. The intensifiers are different, right? Yeah. I see, I see. And uh, what is unconscious? Unconscious? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when you lack consciousness. It's true. For example, if you are desmaiado. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. In Portuguese, we tend to use the word inconsciente. Yeah, because it can be something literal or figurative, right? So, sure, yeah. It can be like, oh, I'm sorry I did this, but uh, I wasn't conscious. Uh, I wasn't aware about everything that you know of, you know? So, in English, we also use subconscious. Subconscious, Frequently. yeah, like inside your mind. Yeah, uh -huh, like, totally. oh, it was subconscious. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's a good one too, but it's not in this lesson, but it's a good one. I'm going to update soon, okay? And what is the distinction? I don't know. 
know. I mean, I know distinto, mm -hmm. right? Okay. But it's different, isn't it? In fact, in Portuguese, it would be more like a distinção. Distinção. Yes. And the trouble in there, it's because we have a very simple word to use to substitute distinction. Difference. Difference. Yeah. Like uh, distinction. What are What is the distinction of this paper and this paper? No, they are... Same. Like 100% the same. So there's no distinction. Mm -hmm. Nothing differ. Nothing differs from them, you know? Mm -hmm. So distinction is diferença, all right? Pretty good. In Portuguese, of course, we have the word, in fact, uh, in English, too, difference. I think it's way more used than distinction, yeah? What? My coffee is really cold. Really? <laughs> <coughs> okay, all right. Yeah. Now we are going to go to the expressions to finish the part of the translations, all right? Okay. So, Emily, what is self control? Do you know? Auto control. Exactly. It's the, the ability that you have to control yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you believe you have a good self control? Mm -hmm. Yeah? I do. Sometimes I like you start getting crazy already. Based on the amount of people around me that are still alive, I have great self control. It's true. It's true. Okay. I'll stay with that. <laughs> I'll stay with that. And what is to die out? I have no idea how to say that in Portuguese. No, but um, this phrase of verb, when I learned, when I first learned this one, uh, it was taught. Uh, where did I learn it? I guess it was in a podcast or something. Mm. It was connected with fashionable things and the fads. And how can you explain to die out to somebody? Do you know how to explain it in English? Yeah, it just <clears throat> means to slowly lose popularity until it disappears. In Portuguese, we have the perfect term for that. Hmm. Cair de moda. Sair de moda. Cair de moda. Uh -huh. But you know, it can also be extinction. Yeah. You know, like in terms of, like we say, the dinosaurs died out. All oh, right, it can also be used like that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I thought it was more connected with fashion things. Not like necessarily. nobody's wearing this anymore, honey. It's died out, you know? So like uh, I thought it was a possibility, but I in fact I know it is a possibility, but I didn't know about the extinction. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, should we use this talking about technologies? For example, man, CDs died out a long time ago. Yeah, you can. Cool. So it's not just about sair de moda, but become unpopular. Yeah, I think it's like cool. to lose popularity. Live and learning. I like <laughs> it. I like it. Pretty good, girl. And the other side here, what is to make believe? Uh, make believe is like to use your imagination to create scenarios. Okay. Do you know a good way to explain this in Portuguese to somebody? We have a good expression for no, that too. No, I don't know. It's like fazer de conta. Vamos fazer de conta que a gente trabalha na CNN, okay? Uh, okay. Let's make believe fazer that we conta. work in CNN. Okay. We create a fictional scenario that only exists for us, mm -hmm. you know? It's the to make believe one. Mm -hmm. So, remember this, fazer de conta. Fazer de conta, uh -huh. okay. It's weird, I know, because when you think about conta, it can be like a piece of paper that you must pay. Right, a bill. Yeah, you know, but in Portuguese, fazer de conta means to make believe, okay? Okay. All right, and uh, to dress up. To dress up, uh, <clears throat> kind of related to make believe, I guess. Yeah, is it? It can be. Oh, interesting. Bring me that. Like if you if you're a kid and you um, put on your dad's suit or something, okay. you're dressing. You're playing dress up. Oh, cool, cool. But we also use it for putting on formal wear, like formal clothing. That's the one that I teach my students. Like when you go to a party, you can't go with your traditional clothes. You need to dress up. Right. It's a good way of using that, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, do you think it, it can be like partially a synonym for to wear something? I think it doesn't fit, right? In terms of clothing, mm. like we only use dress up for fancy clothes. 
Oh, cool. This is a really important information then. If I am going to dress up with a VPFI t-shirt, it's not going to be like that. But Probably maybe with not. a tuxedo, okay. Yes. Oh, cool. My because gosh. regular clothes, you just use dress. Okay. Dress up is like next level. Uh-huh. You know? I see. I see. super chic. Pretty perfect. Well, the student has already what he was looking for because he has the translations and we talked about the things that we knew about these words. Mm -hmm. The next time we get back, we are going to be talking about the grammar, okay? Okay. So let's go.